Hello and welcome to your daily word. Welcome back to our daily word. I'm Pastor David and today we're going to look at a snapshot taken from the word of God on the man Abraham. As you might expect, someone who's been called a friend of God, he probably has a lot of snapshots. But the one we're looking at today is found in Genesis 18. It begins with a scene as God appears to Abraham as he sits in the doorway of his tent. The Lord appears and when Abraham sees him, he sees three men standing beside him. Some question, was it a manifestation of the Trinity with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Others think it was a theophany of the pre-incarnate Christ with two angels. Well, we're not going to stop to think about that today. That's a subject for another time. But it appears from verses 1 to 20 that this visit had two very important aspects. First, God had come because he was going to reveal to Abraham and affirm to Abraham his promise that he would give him a son. And now he was not only just going to affirm the promise, he was going to reveal to him that this child would be born within the next year. Secondly, after this conversation, God is going to leave and go down to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And there he is going to execute righteous judgment upon them and destroy all of the unrighteous and wickedness of the plain. Because of his unique relationship, God and Abraham have a discussion and God reveals to Abraham what he is about to do. So let's look in at the snapshot and start at verse 21, where God says, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I'll know. Then the men turned away from there and they went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous should be as the wicked? Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And so the Lord said, If I find 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed, now I am but dust and ashes, have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the fifty righteous, would you destroy all of the city for lack of five? And so he said, If I find forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again, and said, Suppose there should be forty found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of the forty. Then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty should be found there. And so he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, Indeed, now I have taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. And so he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. And then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. Suppose 10 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. And so the Lord went his way. And as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Let's look at this picture for a moment. Here's what I see. I see a man, Abraham, who held a very special place in the heart of God. God said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? God respected Abraham because he had honored him and he feared him. He, because he, he had trusted in him. Jesus in John 15, 15 says to his disciples, no longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known unto you. In James 2, 23, it tells us that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. God in the Old Testament calls Abraham his friend and reveals what he is doing because he has trusted and believed in God's promises. Are you like Abraham, a friend of God? Do you believe his promises and take him at his word? Then he wants you to be in the know. He wants you to know all that he is doing. He wants to talk with you by his word and by his Holy Spirit. As you read his word, Jesus will reveal himself to you. And he wants to make known to you all that he is doing. Even as God called Abraham his friend, Jesus calls you his friend today. Secondly, in Abraham's conversation, I noted that there were three very important things. First, he spoke to God with humility, recognizing God and his authority. He did not permit his relationship with God to diminish his reverence or fear of God. Secondly, 
His concern and approach to God was twofold. First, the honor and the reputation of God was paramount. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He didn't want God's reputation to be sullied in any way. Thirdly, his concern was not for himself, nor for his nephew and his family. It was for the lost in the city. His plea was not to spare the righteous, but rather to spare the ungodly because of the presence of the righteous. Do you take God and your relationship with him for granted? Or is there still a sense of awe and fear and reverence when you approach him in prayer? Do your petitions in prayer reflect a heart that places the honor and the reputation of God first? And does your heart reflect the heart of God for his lost? Why did God allow Abraham to question him? Not once, not twice, but six times regarding sparing the ungodly because of the righteousness of all those present. It's because God is looking for one who will stand in the gap and intercede for the ungodly. The word says God is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Will you be the one to stand in the gap Will you use your relationship with God through Christ Jesus to approach him and to intercede for them that they may come to know and repent of their sins and thus come to know his wonderful grace and goodness in Christ Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us today. Come back tomorrow for the next Daily Word. God bless.